Here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, to make it in today's workplace, you need both hard and soft skills. Hard skills being those that help you actually do your profession, and soft, well, those are the skills that just help you get along. Today, we begin our show with a gentleman who is the perfect example of both. Roy Clark is known for his musical mastery of anything with a string, yet it is his way with others and his gentle charm that made him a star. Sit back and enjoy some picking and a grinning because this is a show you don't want to miss. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. Oklahoma's investment in career tech provides more than nationally recognized technology education and training. It produces solid financial returns for the state's economic future. Oklahoma Career Tech, elevating our economy. And the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. And now, from the Career Tech Studios in Stillwater, here's your host, Rob McClendon. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. Well, Roy Clark may be best known for his work on the Hee Haw television show, but this longtime Oklahoman is in fact a virtuoso with anything with strings, and just as funny as you remember him. I was able to sit down with Clark in his Tulsa office to talk about his career and his love of music. From his earliest days, Roy Clark knew the value of a smile. When I first noticed that people could laugh at different things I did and said uh, was in grade school. A country boy living in our nation's capital, Roy and his dad spent many an evening playing local clubs. Every street corner had a club or something that, that had maybe two pieces of music and the audience was there because D.C. always had a military bases and all these young people they also had young girls that right out of high school working for the government. So every night was a Saturday night. And Clark began to hone his musical talent. Television and I was given birth about the same year. And I did my first television show in 1947. He's a sensational one-man show. So let's put the lightning fingers of Roy Clark to work. With that laugh and sly smile, Clark's music became laced with humor. <laughs> if you play guitar like I do, you have to have comedy. And Roy Clark became a staple on early television. I'm the great pretender. Known for his charm as well as his music, a TV presence that CBS noticed when looking for a summer replacement for the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. Sounds like some kind of nut. <laughs> some nut. ding man going around talking to the trees. <laughs> Hi there, tree. <laughs> Just dropped by to talk to you for a minute, Jill, I'm shy. <laughs> we made a decision that maybe we ought to entertain a show that would be with music and quick cut one-liners like laughing. With more of a small town feel. Hee haw! And in Two, the summer of 69, hee haw hit the airwaves. <laughs> Welcome to Hee Haw, starring Buck Owens and Roy. Clark. And Roy could play comedy and sing. He was the first person that we went after when the creation of Hee Haw got started. Buck really made a contribution to Hee Haw because of his music and of course of his recording. He was a good setup man. So it worked. The combination of the two was just a beautiful relationship. So that was the combination they wanted was Buck in his record sales and uh, made with my jovial face. And so began a 25-year run of a show often dismissed by critics, but loved by its 30 million weekly viewers. 
You know, they say he's 94, never looked at a girl in his life, never smoked, took a drink, or gambled. Beats me why he wanted to live so long. <laughs> when you did something, that you had to live with it. There was no stopping tape. Oh, really? We never rehearsed. Because then if they found out there was a stop button, then we'd be stopping all day long, stopping the tape. So what you saw was pretty much what they shot, loopers and all. <laughs> Junior, you know I do believe that that Marvin Muff Knuckles is the laziest one man that I personally have ever seen in my entire life. What do you think? I know it is that he is, and if he ever wakes up over twice a week, he complained of in snorting them. And... <laughs> it was down to a science in that I would get the guest artists first, get all their music out of the way. Then the next one in line would be Buck Owens, get his music out of the way. Then I would bring in everybody for comedy. Now Roy would be there now when we would do the comedy, because the very first thing that when we did comedy was picking and grinning with Buck. And once we got through with picking and, with picking and grinning, Buck would go home. And it would be comedy with Roy, and with the rest of the people, and at the back end, I would do Roy's music. So that's the way I would, you know, finish uh, the style of this production. So twice a year, the entire crew would gather in Nashville to record enough shows for the season, giving Clark a chance to tour, and audiences the opportunity to see that behind those comedic chops was an extraordinary musician. <laughs> Clark was at the height of his popularity, appearing on a variety of TV shows. Well, I didn't know you were country, Donnie. Are you kidding? Listen to this. When the deep purple falls <laughs> the sleepy garden walls. Good, huh? It really does bring tears to your eyes. Mine too. But it was as a guest star on The Odd Couple in 1971 that Clark's picking outshone his grinning. letting America see the musical talent behind that smile. cultures and transcended Cold War hostilities. You played in the Soviet Union truly at the height of the Cold War when there were definite tensions between our two countries. It seemed like the thing to do. Everybody was saying you can't do it, it's impossible, there's too many things in the way. But we had uh, the Voice of America, was they opened up the airwaves to them, uh, which they had been blocked. And so they were talking about us coming, and made it really exciting. I couldn't wait to see us coming. So what was it like to play to this crowd? How did they react? J just like a rock and roll audience. Oh boy, they get they would get down and they would gyrate and do what they thought Elvis Presley did, and uh, oh, it was special. A connection Clark makes with his audience and most everyone he meets. The comedy will really soothe a lot of hard places in your life if you can laugh at it. Will comedy improve a couple of missed notes here and there? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, when you, uh, somebody said, what do you do if you make a mistake? I said, I laugh. They said, you're always laughing. I said, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Now Clark has called Tulsa, Oklahoma home for going on 40 years. And while his touring schedule is a little bit lighter these days, you can still catch an occasional conversation with Roy Clark on stage. 
Now, when we return, we meet the man behind the music. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon, featuring some of the good things that are happening in the great state of Oklahoma. Well, you may not know the name Jim Halsey, but ask any country singer, and they probably will. Known as the star maker, Halsey has guided the careers of too many country artists to name. But here's just a few. Roy Clark, Waylon Jennings, Reba McIntyre, Dwight Yoakam, and the Oak Ridge Boys. Now, I visited with Halsey in his office in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and what I found was a virtual history lesson in the evolution of country music. I have to ask, in this country, why do you think the critics are sometimes hard on country music, yet the Americans absolutely love it? Well, I, th I think maybe the critics like to be critical. And they found that, that people over the years maybe haven't appreciated the depths and soul of country music, what's really there. I th they're beginning to do that now. And it's hard to differentiate between country music and pop music mm -hmm. and even rock music in today's world. And the artists now cross over. Right. So, well, our company was one that helped him cross over because we started with Roy Clark and with Hank Thompson playing venues that didn't expect country music to be. And all of a sudden people like it. And here's Roy Clark with his masterful guitar playing. I mean, you know, he's... Uh, one of the 50 top guitar players of all time. And Rolling Stone, he's like number 37 of the top 50 all-time guitar players. So people all of a sudden realize, hey, I like that. And um, so we started early on in, in my career with our company to go places country music had never been before. And a lot of that was overseas, international. And we started in 1952 with Hank Thompson making international tours to uh, Asia, to Japan, to Okinawa, to Australia, to uh, New Zealand. And then we decided to take country music to Europe. And we did, and we were the first to, to take country music to on concert tours and festivals to the United Kingdom, to Benelux countries, Scandinavian countries, Germany, France, Spain, Italy. How was the country music accepted in oh, Europe? Uh, fantastic. We had already gone to the Soviet Union in 1976. That was the first country music show, country music artist ever to play the Soviet Union. That was Roy Clark and the Oak Ridge Boys. And it set a whole new tone for art and music and diplomacy mm -hmm. within the Soviet Union. They were there for 21 days. They did 21 sold out concerts, but it was groundbreaking for country music because it opened up the doors of Eastern Europe. There were 17 satellite countries that were belonged to that Soviet bloc. And, and we eventually, we played all of them. So eventually country music may have helped change history. We think so. And a lot of, uh, when Roy came back in the 1976 tour, uh, we got a, we, received a letter from every senator and every congressman in Congress at that time saying what a magnificent uh, event that that was and they felt that diplomatically that helped things. Things were very difficult then. We went there and everybody in the Soviet Union thought America was gonna bomb them at any moment and, and it was very difficult, but Roy and the Oak Ridge Boys won those people over because, you know, being from Oklahoma and Tennessee, the Oak Ridge Boys are from Tennessee, they, there was, they were just people to them. And they treated them like people and people treated us like, like people. And it was on a person to person basis, that kind of diplomacy works. Now I have my entire conversation with Mr. Halsey streaming on our website at okhorizon.com. And let me tell you, it's some true insight into what it takes to be in the music business. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, local lessons from some of the industry's best. But first, Oklahoma's Music Hall of Fame. Well, Oklahomans have always had a rich and profound impact on our country's musical culture. 
and on an annual basis, Oklahoma's Music Hall of Fame has been honoring the world's most notable talents whose gifts and musical styles are as breathtaking and diverse as the Oklahoma landscape. Our Andy Barth attended this year's event and has the story of two of their latest inductees. Well, the TV show Hee Haw is an American classic, from the family-friendly humor to the music played by world-class musicians. And one of those talents was inducted into Oklahoma's Music Hall of Fame during a night of foot-stomping music. She's known for playing the blue fiddle on one of America's favorite shows. Now, Janet Jay is an inductee into Oklahoma's Music Hall of Fame. And I present to you, Miss Janet Jay. presenting for this wonderful occasion where I'm honored. I'll tell you, it is really exciting. Uh, you don't think about it ahead of time, but when it happens, it's just amazing. It was a night full of music, and Jay says this honor is one of a kind. I feel hum humbled and honored and excited, thrilled. And Jay wasn't the only person honored at the music-filled event. Sherman Halsey was a renowned filmmaker and artist manager. Halsey passed away in 2013 and was posthumously presented with the Governor's Award for his work in the industry. On behalf of Governor Fallon and the state of Oklahoma, I would like to present the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame Governor's Award to the family of Sherman Halsey. Jim Halsey is Sherman's father. Well, it means a lot to me personally because I guess from an early age, as a little child growing up, I recognized uh, his genius. I want to drink that shot of whiskey. I want to smoke that cigarette. Halsey directed countless music videos for country music's top artists. Yet his father says Sherman didn't realize the extent of his talent. Across West Virginia. He never saw himself as a genius, but he had the eye, he had the ear, and he, and he had the, uh, the ingenuity to think of different ways to present things on film. And for Jay, sharing the stage with Oklahoma musicians is humbling. This is Tall Cotton. Oklahoma is full of fabulous musicians. I am honored to be a part of this. It was a night of music and awards honoring the best in Oklahoma music. Other Oklahoma musicians honored at the event were Tom Paxton, Tom Skinner, Otto Gray and his Oklahoma Cowboys, and the Apache Tribe of Oklahoma. Thank you so much, Andy. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the music video industry, I visited with Sherman's father, Jim Halsey, about his son's impact on that industry, and that's streaming on our website. Just go to OKHorizon.com and look under our value added section. Now when we return, we'll tell you how you can learn from some of country music's greats at the Roy Clark Music School. Want to share something you've seen here today? Well, all of our episodes are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV. Or you can subscribe to our weekly free podcast on iTunes. Well, if you'd like to learn from some of country music's best, the Roy Clark Music School at Northeast Technology Center in Claremore is offering adult education classes that run the gamut of the music business. As J.D. Roseman shows us, it's an educational experience that looks to be a whole lot of fun. Whether it's a hobby or a future career, fiddling with Jana J can't be beat. Past Hee Haw TV star and world-class fiddler, now wanting to give back to her fans that gave her so much. Fiddling is a tradition that's handed down from generation to generation. 
from person to person. A family love passed down to her. We lived with grandmother and granddaddy for a while, and every night we would jam and play those old-time fiddle tunes. And student Charlene Smith jumped at the chance to fiddle with the best. She's committed to continuing and fostering our American musical heritage, and she's just interested in uh, helping any fiddler be the best they can be. And the school that started it all, instructor Ray Bingham. Roy Clark is an icon, obviously. There's no, no comparison, never been a better entertainer in the world. Tucked away in Claremore, Oklahoma, you'll find the Roy Clark School of Music offering a variety of courses ranging from piano and fiddle to music management and business. A school infusing passion in its teachers. And it's made all of us instructors really want to do well. And we don't want anyone to come up here and leave disappointed, so we, we really do our very best. And teachers like Daniel McBride take music beyond the basics. Music is feeling, that's what it is. It, it makes you happy, makes you sad. Uh, it can make you angry. A design that is unique to each musician. So you can have music, sheet music, there's lots of music out there now, but you've got to have kind of a style to go with it. And because you can't play Boiled the Cabbage like Mozart. You know, it just doesn't work. <laughs> Playing with attitude, not wanting to stop. Nobody wants to go home. We all, all want to stay. Passing musical talent and skills down from one generation to the next, all while fiddling the night away. Now, if you'd like to see all of their adult education musical offerings, we have a link to their website. Just head to OKHorizon.com and look for it under this story. You can keep up with us throughout the week. Just head to OKHorizon.com where you can see more of any of our stories, read our reporters' behind-the-scenes blogs, see what others are saying about us on Twitter, and face the facts with our regular updates. So reach out and touch us anywhere and anytime. Well, if you realize what it takes to make their favorite song pitch perfect, our Courtney May visited a career tech program in Tulsa that teaches high school students the art of sound. Hands-on learning with musical instruments, video, and audio helps students at Tulsa Technology Center leave career ready. I could set up live shows from what I'm learning. I could, um, I could work in TV or movies. Um, there's a lot of different options that I could kind of go with. Max Miller is a student in the Broadcast Sound Engineering program and says he will finish prepared for a job in music, broadcast, or production. <laughs> There's job readiness training in there as well to be ready to be hired once you get out in the industry. The program lasts one year, training students to produce audio and video projects. Instructor Walt Bowers says students will leave the program with more preparation than their competitors. We try to give what would be a five, six year head start, things we wish we would have known our first years as we were trying to hit industry. And co-instructor Michael Haggard says Again, he is lucky really to be able to use music out. as a teaching avenue. We use, you know, our musical talents as a vehicle to learn the production side. Uh, if they're coming in wanting to learn to be behind the camera or the, the man behind the console or the woman behind the console, that's really what we teach. And there's a lot of art to that. We just get them play with some really cool toys along the way. I have my kids at home and then I have my kids here. I, I, and when they do something, I'm, I'm right there, hey, that's my, that's my student. Well, 
students in the program have access to 15 studios filled with professional production equipment, helping them hit the right note without trying to get a job. So how much is an education worth? How about a great teacher that changes your life? Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, we look at the value of education. Had I not had an ag teacher like Mr. Kirk, would not have maximized my opportunities. I wouldn't have understood the opportunities that I had as an FFA member. Changing lives in the classroom on Oklahoma Show for the Hard Land, Oklahoma Horizon. Well, that is going to wrap us up for today, but you can see more of any of our stories on our website at okhorizon.com. Follow us throughout the week at Twitter at OKHorizonTV or just become a Horizon fan on Facebook. I'm Rob McClendon. Thanks for including us in your day. Hope to see you back here next week. Thank you for watching Oklahoma Horizon.